Love Talk Radio. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits, and today we're bringing you the one thing that you need to have to have it all. With the right people, culture, and values, you can accomplish great things, said Tricia Griffith. In order to have both happiness and success, there is one more thing we need to have in our lives. If we don't want to have to choose between the two, we need clear values. What are values? Values are the truths or the beliefs that you live by. Whether you live by your religious beliefs or whether you make up your own beliefs, it's a truth that you live and breathe and pass along to other people that surround you. I'd like to share some highly useful insights from Centerpoint founder Bill Harris. It was Bill, after all, who really helped me and thousands of others see the importance of looking at values, getting clear about what you most value deeply and personally is an eye-opening and tremendous, powerful personal growth process. As a refresher, let me remind you what a value is. The simplest definition for our purposes is a value is something that we think is very important in our lives. Seems obvious, right? But let's dig a little deeper by looking at what Bill had to say about values. Your values sit at the root of your thoughts, feelings, and actions, all of which, in turn, directly impact your results in life. So it is really, really important to take a magnifying glass to your deepest values and uncover those things that drive you at your deepest level. Then, you can put those values to work for you in productive, powerful, and even magnetic ways to attract the things, people, and situations you desire most in life. We can begin to see all and just why it's so critical to get clear about your values. Now, Let's look at values this way. Your religious teachings teach you. For instance, if you're a Baptist, they believe they don't believe in dancing. They don't believe in music. They don't believe in parties. If you're Catholic, your values surround the Virgin Birth and the Virgin Mary and Jesus and what it all falls into and where it comes from. It's those teachings that you learn within your religion that are part of the values that you live by. And think about it. If you got someone who, in their mind, money and the lifestyle they can live with money is more important than just look at Trump and see how he lives his life and look at his kids and look at the way they are, the the values they have, the way they treat the people around them. Is those the kind of values that you want to have? Then how can you vote for and agree to let someone run a country who literally dis 
likes people. Now, I know someone through the gym, and he owns his own business, but his business is construction. And he has to deal with a lot of immigrants who come in and take away jobs. So in his mind, what Trump has done in the way he treats the immigrants is okay because they're his competition in business. But for Trump, it's not that they're competition for business of Americans. It's more of the fact that he disrespects other people who don't are not a part of his his circle of friends. And he looks at these as people that he's taken advantage of and used through the years. And it's like if you look at how he's trying to dismantle everything that Obama did for this country, and especially in health care, when he doesn't even have anything to replace it. And if it was up to him, people with disabilities or anyone with a pre-existing condition wouldn't have health coverage today. Are those the values that you live by, or do you, are your values much more caring and loving about the people around you and wanting to help them to live the best quality of life possible. Value, says Bill, are the very basis of our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and actions behind almost everything we think and do lies one or more values that are influencing and directing often in a very subtle ways, our experience in life. The value structure, as Bill called it, is like a pair of eyeglasses through which you see ourselves and the world around us. For nearly every action we take in life, there are one or more values behind it. When you want to know what a person values, or does simply watch their actions. But if you want to know why they do something, look at their values. To state what's probably obvious by now, values are a big deal, but there's more to it and this idea that initially meets the eye. Bill asks us to go beyond the basic kind of values like being a good person or having enough money. It's good to know about those kinds of values, but we need to examine them a little more closely before they become useful. Understanding our values not just comes from the religious training or your education. It also comes from the values that you're parents have, because think about it, Trump's father is of German heritage. His grandfather came from the time of Hitler, and that mentality has been passed along. And when you think about Trump and his beliefs and the way he treats people, it all can be relate back to those values at that time. Here's another thing to think about that how people value relationships has to do with the kind of relationship that they have as children and the influence their parents have on them. For instance, my father came from a home where his father screamed and yelled all the time, and he was a tough disciplinarian. My mother came from a home where her mother was very dominant, but the mother fought with the father so much that he would literally have to leave the home. And what would he do? He would travel around the country. Then when he got tired of traveling, he would come home and 
for the time period that he was there, he always left my grandmother pregnant with another child. The problem was that if she had been different, if she had been more of a mensch, he probably would not have had to to leave the home and travel all the time because in his latter years, she, I can remember visiting and she was always cursing him and fighting with him. And along the way, the the things that what she instilled in her children was jealousy and petty jealousy, so much so that my mother was the most negative person to be around. And I could not be around her at all because all she ever did was tell me what I couldn't do. She was never encouraging. She never believed in me. And she was always looking for a way to keep me from ever leaving home and being independent. And when I finally did leave home, I knew that I had to succeed because if I didn't and I went and I ended up going back to live with her, all she would do would be throw in my face constantly how I failed, how I failed. And I knew that she was very toxic to me and I could not be around her. Therefore, the whole last year of her life, I did not even see her. And I used to tell her, why don't you just die? Die. You'll solve everyone's problem. You know what? She actually passed away two days before my birthday, and we buried her on my birthday. Yes, that was harsh, but at the same time, that the values that she was passing along to her children was that of anger and petty jealousy. And she, because we grew up in a hostile environment, she liked to push the buttons to create that hostile environment even more because that was her comfort zone growing up in the home she did where her mother fought with her father almost constantly. So that's an understanding of where your values come from and just how they can affect you and the things that you can pass along and how it, it, unless someone within the generation decides they want to change and they seek out help to change or they want to break that cycle, then it will keep being passed on from generation to generation. For one thing, according to Bill, we need to know whether these values are on our list because we're moving toward them or because we're unknowingly moving away from them. Sometimes we think we're chasing after something we want in life when what we're really doing is running away from what we don't want. Let's look at a quick example. Many people place a high value on having enough money to live comfortably. Makes sense. After all, there are bills to pay, groceries to buy, and dozens of other needs and wants that require financial resources. But how we think about the value of money can have a profound impact on how well we're able to manifest wealth and financial resources in our lives. If, for example, we value money because we're afraid of not having enough, of being broken, or having to struggle or skate, by, we might find it hard to create the kind of financial situation we want because our internal drive is busy trying to avoid being broke rather than trying to find opportunities to make more money than trying to find opportunities to save it up. We might think we're focused on building financial security when we're really just acting from a fear of scarcity. There are many people who 
because of World War II and because of the 1929 crash when a lot of people lost money and there was scarcity, a lot of them, the, the values they have, the things that they do because of the experiences they have, what happens is they're passing those values on to someone else. And the difference is there's the experience that creates a value and then there's the secondary aspect of it, of something that was passed on to you because of what happened to someone else. It's very similar to this as an example. What if you were caught in a storm and you had an adverse effect from it? Then what happens whenever a storm comes up, you get fearful and then you want to hide. And then what do you teach your children when a storm comes up is that it's bad. It's going to harm you. You have to hide. And what happens is for you, it was a realistic fear. For them, it's a secondary fear and an unfounded fear. So the same thing goes on with money, too. You're thinking of money. And then, too, if you were someone who didn't have a lot and you, of money and you looked at someone who did have money and the way they lived their life, instead of trying to emulate them and strive to make more money and, and learn from them, what do you do? You gain resentments and you make remarks about how it's how bad money is. And then what are you doing? You're really passing along those values to your children just as easily. This kind of fear-based motivation usually ends up with self-sabotage. If you're ever wondered why even when you use the powers of your focus, you still struggle to achieve something that you know is within reach, chances are high that your value around the achievement has you moving away from it rather than toward it. People who clarify their values often find that the strategies they've been using all focus on avoidance rather than attraction by clarifying your values and shifting your focus, including your internal self-talk. You can begin to attract more of the things in life than you want to spend less time in fight or flight mode against the things that you don't want. Here's a good example of that problem that you have of the fight or flight mechanism that's internal within us that you can come upon a situation and if you don't want to learn how to handle it or how to overcome that obstacle, what do you do? You literally run away. How many times have you watched a show where they've even made remarks to someone about how they were always never there when they should have been? Why? Because that person couldn't handle that situation. And instead of facing it head on, would just take off and go in another direction. So the idea is, what are you going to do to face up and focus and deal with something rather than running away from it? Because part of that is what you're teaching someone else to do that you have an influence over. So the idea is this. Learn how to take your beliefs and face them. Also, deal with your fears and learn to overcome them because if you don't, then they will be keeping you from reaching your goals ever at any time 
in your life. Bill also spoke about watching for another form of values conflict, which is when two important things we want in life seem to be at cross purposes. For example, we might value both security and adventure, or perhaps freedom and family are both high values. What about career and fun? Now we're talking about the work life balance, that what is important to you, you, putting the time into work to earn the money or taking the time to spend and building a relationship with your children, your parents, whoever is important to you in your life. On the surface, it might prove difficult to enjoy these things in life because in many ways, they're at odds. If we really want adventure, we might have to take some risks. That means we have to give up some of our sense of security. We might really prize our independence and freedom, and yet family means a lot to us. Perhaps we value fun about above or else, but we also want a rewarding career. So in order to resolve these values, conflicts, we have to choose one or the other, right? No, not at all. The idea is to find balance in your life. But deciding in a very self-honest manner which of the values belongs above the other in terms of priority will help you make decisions that ultimately yield more happiness and fulfillment. Bill said, unless you can identify and clarify, clearly prioritize your values, these kinds of conflicts will compromise your results. The idea is to understand where you're coming from. When you understand that, when you understand exactly what your values are and how your values come into place in your life, then and only then will you find a balance in how you live your life. This can be tricky. Not everyone likes the idea of putting freedom above family. That just doesn't seem okay somehow. It might even seem kind of selfish. But here's the thing. If you truly what is more important to you, and you can come to terms with it. You may find it much easier to invest more quality of time with your family and release internal conflicts or resentments that could be creating a lot of dysfunction and disharmony in your financial relationships. In other words, honesty about your values frees you up to make healthy and resourceful decisions and choices about each value on our list, no matter where it ranks. When you're plagued with the internal values complex, you can experience guilt, frustration, shame, anger, disappointment. Well, you get the idea. It's no wonder that so much unhappiness in our lives is rooted in the lack of clarity around our values. So just clear up your values, conflicts, YOLA. Problem solved, right? Well, yes and no. Because values are the things that influence every aspect of our lives. We react a certain way on a holiday. And we just had the July 4th celebration. And 
look at what Trump did to the celebration, that July 4th is a time when we celebrated independence. It's not a time when we showed military might. That was done on Memorial Day or even Veterans Day. But now what he wanted to do, instead of having the Beach Boys come like they have year after year, he went on there and made a whole campaign rally out of it and literally brought in the military might just to show how it, that, and the thing is, that's where his values are, that yes, you want to think about your country first, but Always remember this, that the world functions because every country works together. If any one of us, it's the same thing like a family dynamic. It works because each person gives and takes. If there's one person trying to control the other or the situation changes, then what happens is those values kind of crumble because we're not being... or or having the things go the way we want them to. So understanding where your values are and how to make them work is the most important thing that you can do. It can be a little disconcerting to find that we thought was important, just something we've been pouring a lot of worry and energy into without much to show in return. Or we might find values we've spent many years repressing or ignoring, or in addition to discovering covert values we've ignored. We might even learn that the values we thought that were our own really come from someone else. No, the truth is that when you clarify your values, it isn't always easy. In fact, it takes a little work and some courage. Everyone knows success takes hard work, but what a lot of people don't realize is that hard work doesn't always make a person happy. You have to know the purpose of which means that you should know why you're working hard. And what are you working hard for? In many ways, you're working hard because you want to be a good role model for a child. But you also need to have that work-life balance because you need to develop those relationships and help and nurture them. It is because you've been told by someone else to do it. Once you get clear about your values, any hard work, you put in will give you a lot more happiness and success because it will be an investment in values. You've consciously chosen. And this makes all the difference if you want to be happy and successful. And you can do it. So remember, when you're thinking about your values, when you're looking at how you can benefit yourself and how those values can help you balance out your life because often we our value may be and this can be instilled in us by a, a either a significant other or it can be that you are recreating the things that your parents did in in their life in the relationship that you have with your spouse or your significant other because that's what you were taught and that's the value you hold because of what you've seen over the years. So remember, only you can live the life that you choose. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one personal careercoach.com and we have articles that you can read and we also have a that you can get coaching on living the best quality of life possible 